Good evening, I'm David Kramer with Alaska Weather. As always, please visit our website, weather.gov Alaska. You can get any updates to the forecast or check out any watches, warnings, and advisories that we might have out for your area. You can also call the Weather Info Line at 1-885-937-4977. Get any updates through that as well. Really quick, I want to start off highlighting some of the nicer weather that we're seeing up in the interior. In Fairbanks, we're looking at highs getting up into the 70s into the weekend and lows dropping down into the uh, lower 40s to the 50s as we get closer towards Saturday. However, we will start to see some chance for some precipitation moving in Saturday, especially as we move later in the day. For our flood potential, we do have one of the highlighted areas here for significant rises in high water. It's going to be along the eastern portion of the Kenai Peninsula and into Prince William Sound. We are going to see a little bit later how we have steady flow from the south bringing in an influx of moisture to that area. For our fire danger, uh, most areas around the state are staying in low, some in the interior medium, but as we move to the eastern interior, we're going to see some areas that have high fire danger. And then in the Yukon Flats area, that's where we have the majority of our fire danger remaining for this season. And that's going to see high to very high again in the Yukon Flats area, and this is looking out for tomorrow. For our satellite imagery, I want to focus on a low that's near Sand Point as we start that's slowly moving uh, east towards Kodiak Island area. And as we watch this again, we'll notice the area of moisture to the east of that low that's pushing from the south, pulling in that moisture off of the North Pacific and headed towards South Central Alaska. As we watch this again, we can see that moisture coming in, hitting the Kenai Peninsula. But as we look further into the interior, we can actually see some breaks in the clouds over much of the interior portions of the state. However, as we get to the northwest areas, especially closer towards the Brooks Range, we are going to see some lower cloud cover out there. Finally, out west, we're going to watch as some moisture moves in from the west, moving over some ridging that we have out near the Aleutian Islands. And you can see the cloud cover stretching that throughout the Aleutians through much of the Bering Sea, pushing in past the Pribilof Islands. Taking a look now at our weather for the remainder of the day, we'll start with our low that's near Kodiak Island, and that's bringing in on that eastern side, southerly flow coming in, pushing in moisture all along the North Gulf Coast and Kodiak Island areas, with the heaviest of that being in the eastern Kenai Peninsula and Prince William Sound. Some of that precipitation could sneak over the mountains and make it into the rest of South Central Alaska, but should be quite a bit lighter than the stuff we'll see along the coast. Some of that rain is also going to be out over the Bristol Bay area, and northerly winds on the back side of this slope bringing in some precipitation to the northern side of the Alaska Peninsula. Farther out east, we are going to see some weak ridging out over the panhandle that's holding off moisture in the southern locations, but as we get farther to the north, we are expecting to see some rain. And then up in the interior portion of the state, not going to see any of the moisture making it up there for today. We will see some areas of cloud cover, but as we get out to the eastern interior, we are going to see some clear skies. And then up along the Arctic coastline, some uh, light rain lingering around much of the Arctic coast. Dropping down into the Bering Sea and Aleutian Islands, we do have that ridging that's out by the central and eastern Aleutian Islands extending out through much of the Bering Sea. And then a lot of rain out to the west of that as that moisture pushes in from the west, tracking around the top of that ridge. As we move into tonight, we can see that rain pushing farther to the east, now extending out over the central Aleutians as well as the western Aleutian Islands, making its way towards the Pribilof Islands. Our stationary low near Kodiak Island is continuing to bring an influx of moisture, pulling in off that uh, Gulf waters as well as the North Pacific, bringing in heavier rainfall to the eastern Kenai Peninsula and Prince William Sound, with lighter front rainfall on the northern side of the mountains there and the rest of South Central Alaska. That rain is also going to extend out by Kodiak Island, the Bristol Bay area, and down by the Alaska Peninsula. Out east, we are going to see uh, rain diminishing for much of the Panhandle area, with Yakutat being the remainder that's going to see a little bit of rain with some of the flow off of the Gulf. Up in the interior, we're starting to clear out those skies, seeing some nicer conditions that extend through the Brooks Range and much of the North Slope area. However, the far northern places, including Ukiagvik, will still see some rain, with a chance for some uh, snow to mix in with that rain by Ukiagvik. 
as we move into Friday, the front that was pushing in closer towards the Arctic coastline is now going to move into the northwestern portion of mainland Alaska, bringing rain with it. That's going to extend down to the western portion of the Seward Peninsula as well and down into uh, the Yukon Delta area. Our other low by Kodiak Island continuing to sit in place, bringing more moisture to much of the southern portion of the mainland, including south central Alaska and much of southwest Alaska and the Alaska Peninsula. Some of that rain will push into the uh, Alaska Range area and up into the western portions of the interior. Down in the Panhandle, we are going to see primarily uh, drier conditions, but some of the northern locations continuing to see some rain. Yakutat, Haines, and Skagway all expected to see a little bit of rain on Friday. Way out west, we're seeing a low tracking through the pattern from the west out by the Pribilof Islands, bringing rain throughout much of the Bering Sea and all of the Aleutian Islands, with a new system coming in from the west, bringing its warm front closer towards the western Aleutians. Then on Saturday, continuing to see rain throughout much of the Bering Sea, Aleutian Islands, and Alaska Peninsula. And then some lighter rain out along the west coast, including southwest Alaska, extending down through south central and all of the interior now as we move later into Saturday. We're also going to see rain extending up through the Brooks Range and along the Arctic coastline with a chance for some snow in the western portions of the Brooks Range. As we look down in the Panhandle, we're going to have flow off of the Gulf waters, bringing in rain throughout all of the Panhandle area on Saturday. Taking a look now at our temperatures Friday morning in the Panhandle, dropping down to the lower to mid 50s with the highest or warmest temperatures in the southern portions of the Panhandle. Out over south central Alaska, lower to mid 50s are expected for those lows, with Glen Allen dropping down to 49 degrees. Friday afternoon highs in the Panhandle area, primarily in the mid to upper 60s, a little bit warmer as we get closer to the southern portions of the Panhandle and cooler as we get closer towards the Akutat, only getting up to 63 degrees there. At over south central Alaska, lower to mid 60s are expected, getting warmer as we get to the more interior locations, 68 Talkeetna, 72 for Glen Allen. And then down by Kodiak, we are going to see temperatures getting up to 59 degrees. Saturday morning lows for the Panhandle is expected to drop down into the mid 50s. And then in the uh, south central areas, lower to mid 50s, Anchorage being a little bit warmer there, 55 degrees expected. And then once again, Glen Allen dropping down the lowest to 49 degrees. Saturday afternoon high temperatures in the Panhandle in the lower to mid 60s, once again getting warmer as we get further to the south and cooler as we get farther to the north with Yakutat again being the coolest at 60 degrees for that Saturday afternoon high. Kenai Peninsula is expected to see temperatures right around 60 degrees in the mid 60s as we move farther to the north with Takina getting up to 66 degrees. Cooler in Valdez only getting up to 58 degrees and then all the way up to 70 for Glen Allen. Moving up into the interior, we do expect temperatures to drop into the lower to mid 40s in the interior, warmer in the eastern locations, and then getting a little bit warmer again along the west coast, mid to upper 40s there, with Kotzebue and Nome both dropping down to 48 degrees. Along the Arctic coastline, we are going to see temperatures primarily in the lower 40s, Ukiagvik a little bit cooler there, 39 degrees. Friday afternoon highs in the interior, uh, getting warmer as we move from west to east, so in the mid 60s for western interior, near 70 for central, and then get into the mid to upper 70s as we get farther to the east. Up along the Arctic coastline, temperatures getting near 60 degrees out east and only around 50 degrees for locations to the west. Down the west coast of the state, temperatures getting into the mid 50s in the Kotzebue Sound area, cooler as we get uh, farther to the west, and then down in the 50s for the Norton Sound area. Saturday morning lows dropping down into the upper 40s for western locations of the interior, and then in the lower 50s as we get into the eastern locations. Up along the Arctic coastline, near 40 degrees in the eastern portions of the North Slope, and then in the mid to upper 30s as we get farther to the west. Down the west coast of the state, dropping down into the 40s, cooler in western locations, a gamble getting down to 42 degrees, and then warmer as we get far, or closer towards mainland Alaska. Saturday afternoon highs in the lower 60s for western interior, getting up into the lower 70s for the eastern interior, with Fort Yukon getting up to 73 degrees. Up along the Arctic coast, we are going to see temperatures in the 40s for most locations. Ukiagvik staying a little bit cooler there, getting up only to 38 degrees. Down the west coast, we're going to see 40s uh, for the western locations and 50s as we get closer towards the mainland. And then down in southwest Alaska, getting down into right around 50 degrees for the southwest. And then in the mid to upper 40s for much of the Aleutian Islands and Pribilof Islands. Friday afternoon highs, getting up into the 40s for the YK, or 50s for the YK Delta, and then 60s for the Bristol Bay area. And then mid 50s for the Aleutian Islands and Alaska Peninsula. 
Saturday morning, going to drop back down to 50 to near 50 degrees for southwest Alaska, and then in the 40s to near 50 for the Aleutian Islands. Saturday afternoon highs getting up into the near 60 to lower 60s for southwest, and then in the Aleutian Islands getting up to in the mid 50s to some areas getting up to 58 at Atka, or Adhak rather. Uh, and then for our climate outlook for temperatures, six to 10 day forecast looking at chances to be below normal temperatures for much of the western mainland down into the Alaska Peninsula. As we move into the eight to 14 day forecast, it's gonna be pretty similar, uh, still seeing chances to be below normal along the west coast, southwest Alaska and the Alaska Peninsula. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to flying weather, we've got uh... IFR right along the central and western Arctic coast and then a pretty good swath southward there along the northwest coast, Bering Strait, most of the western southern Seward Peninsula, Norton Sound and uh, St. Lawrence Island, Yukon Delta and a fair ways into the delta and to a lesser extent mostly marginal for the Kuskokwim Delta but IFR and Nunavak Island right on down Togiak Bay and the Alaska Peninsula. A little bit of marginal VFR there, something of a break for the Perilofs and Eastern Aleutians, and then for areas Atka westward, solid IFR. IFR on the uh, eastern slopes of the western Alaska Range, western Cook Inlet, covering Kamishak Bay, Barren Islands, right on down across Fognak and eastern Kodiak Island. IFR up into Prince William Sound, south coast of the Kenai Peninsula, eastward to the central coast of the Panam and inland over the southern southeast coast. As you can see, pretty good VFR north of the Alaska Range all the way to the eastern north slope and Arctic coast. And then for the afternoon, not much change, uh, a little less in the way of IFR now on the eastern slopes of the western Alaska Range, but still marginal VFR there and across the uh, southern Kuskokwim Valley. Areas of marginal VFR, Bristol Bay, Kuskokwim Delta, and the IFR retreats back to the Yukon Delta coast and uh, pretty much stays put over most of the Bering Sea, Pribilofs to uh, Unmak Island, westward to Shimian Atu, northward through the Bering Strait, northwest coast, western and central Arctic coast, IFR there, western Prince William Sound, uh, possibly to Portage, probably marginal VFR for Girdwood becoming VFR tomorrow afternoon for uh, western Turnigan Arm, northern Cook Inlet, and the Manuska Sitna Valley interior looking pretty good again all the way to the eastern Arctic coast and VFR showing up over portions of the inside waters of the Panhandle otherwise marginal and for the uh, Saturday morning time frame uh, lower conditions across southern Alaska south of the Alaska range there and over the southwest interior mostly marginal VFR some areas of persistent VFR northern Cook Inlet eastern Turnigan Arm up into the Sitna Valley and maybe the uh, northern Copper River Basin, but uh, upslope areas of the western Alaska Range, Kamishak Bay, all are looking IFR-ish with uh, IFR for Chiniak Marmot Bay, Pasagchak, Fognak Island, and part of Kamishak Bay. Looks uh, solid in the IFR for the Bering Sea and the Aleutians right up to the Yukon Delta, Norton Sound. Western North Slope, Brooks Range, and mostly marginal for the Arctic Coast, and marginal VFR with IFR in the Panhandle. For the afternoon, marginal VFR for the southeast coast up to Yakutat, North Gulf Coast, IFR. Resurrection Bay, Kachemak, Kamishak Bay, Kodiak Island, all IFR for the afternoon Saturday. IFR back uh, heavier now along and uh, along the western slopes of the west or the eastern slopes of the western Alaska Range. Marginal VFR mostly for the Kuskokwim Valley, back to IFR, Kuskokwim Mountains into the lower Yukon River va Valley area and the Kuskokwim Delta. IFR just grazing the Arctic coast, a couple of, of areas of IFR, Central Bering Sea, St. Matthew Island, the Privilofs to the Alaska Peninsula, and from Adak westward. Anatuvik, VFR tomorrow, same forecast for Adigan, good VFR flying, either approach, Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR, with a pretty good chance of IFR in the eastern entrance, especially early in the day. Rainy could see some IFR eastern entrance early on, but basically looking pretty marginal, maybe VFR out the west entrance. Windy, possible marginal VFR, south entrance, otherwise VFR to the north. Isabel, VFR, Mentesta, VFR. Tanita, marginal VFR, especially on the east entrance. Portage, IFR, Chilkoot and White, VFR. Freezing levels, eight to 10,000 feet, uh, Kodiak Island and just to the south there, associated with that uh, 
kind of stationary low pressure area, but uh, much warmer air, 14,000 feet over the western Aleutians there, about 6 to 8,000 feet over the eastern Arctic coast, and 10 to 12,000 feet over the Panhandle. And for icing, we've got uh, considerable moderate rime icing coming up to the Kenai Peninsula, and for the jet stream, southeast flow pulling that moisture up to the Kenai Peninsula at 100 knots, about 65 knots into the interior, northwest 120 out over the Aleutians, 40 knot west northwesterlies over the Aleutian southern Bering Sea, southeast 45 knots, Kenai Peninsula, 40 knots out of the west for the Arctic North Slope, and at uh, 3,000 feet westerlies, 35 knots, Alaska Peninsula and Aleutians. Turbulence, moderate chop, western Brooks Range and the Alaska Peninsula and Turnigan Arm. Good evening, Saturn fans. I love Saturn. It might be my favorite planet after Earth. It's so beautiful and complicated, and this week it reaches opposition, meaning that you can see it at its biggest and brightest that it will be for the entire year. To spot it, hit the darkness at midnight any night this week and look southeast. There will be a bright, steady dot on Friday near the full sturgeon moon. That dot is Saturn. Viewing our solar system from high above the north pole of our sun, we can see Earth and Saturn's orbits. It takes a year for Earth to make a trip around the sun. Meanwhile, it takes Saturn almost 30 years to make that same trip. This week, Earth and Saturn are on the same side of the sun, and since they'll be at their closest to each other, Saturn will appear at its brightest. Grab binoculars or a telescope and look for the rings while you keep looking up. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and joining me once again is Cindy Preller. She is the Tsunami Program Manager for the National Weather Service in Alaska region. Thanks for joining us again, Cindy. Thank you, Dave. Mm -hmm. We're talking about tsunami awareness and safety here in Alaska especially, and one of the things that has been uh, your, one of your main focuses is uh, the Tsunami Ready Program. What is that, and uh, how do Alaskans find out more? Awesome. Yes, yeah, Tsunami Ready is a National Weather Service hosted program mm -hmm. in uh, partnership with Storm Ready. Okay. And it is a program that we uh, conduct with our partners in the state, mm -hmm. but it's mostly community driven. So if okay. a community wants to become Tsunami Ready, well, the first thing they need to do is get a hold of me or, or their local WCM at a weather mm -hmm. forecast office okay. or their tsunami uh, team at the state level. So, and this is something that's a NOAA grant, so there's money available to help encourage the preparedness at, at the local level there in the city or the, uh, the village. Yeah. What are some of the places that have done this already? Oh, our oldest tsunami ready city is Seward, Good. you know, but also Sitka, Homer, Valdez are the, you know, the main players, but we've got, mm -hmm. we've got several tsunami ready communities that I'm very proud of. It takes several years to accomplish this. Mm -hmm. And so a few of the things that they do is um, the tsunami risk will be assessed by okay. someone like me or another scientist will help find out, you know, really what their probability is. Mm -hmm. We'll create an inundation map, an evacuation map. Okay. They'll have a mitigation plan. Um, we will set up uh, some partnerships with the schools, yeah. uh, make an evacuation shelter, and then they need to practice. But it is the city that owns the program, really. Mm -hmm. it, it's up to them. And many cities would like to have sirens, and so we help them get those. And you know, and they practice. They have to practice. Sure. So let's say I'm driving into a place like Seward that's tsunami ready. What are some of the things I should look for as maybe a visitor, that no, so I know maybe where I need to go or can be more aware of my tsunami risk? Absolutely. The tsunami ready signage is, is really blatant. It's this, okay. you know, blue and white curling wave sign and, mm -hmm. and there's different shapes of signs that will show you if you are in the hazard zone or mm -hmm. where the evacuation routes are and when you're out of shelter. Okay. So this is a, a multi-step process that helps the uh, residents be more aware of their own risk but then also prepare for when that risk arrives. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And, you know, many communities um, uh, sound their sirens daily, some sound, sound them weekly, you know, okay. to make sure everybody knows what they mean. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's often drills. We have an annual drill once a year. We have Tsunami Awareness Preparedness Week. Mm -hmm. And that's a good time for each community to, to do some exercising. Okay. And is this a program that is unique to Alaska? Absolutely not. It's national. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. And um, all over the country, you'll have the same signage, so it's, it's consistent. Good. So if I'm taking the kids to California, I should be able to see something familiar. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And, you know, some communities hesitate because they think it'll discourage tourism. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to tell those communities that what they're actually doing is they're encouraging responsibility. Sure. The tsunami is going to happen. Right. And it's going to hit every coastline. So, you know, it's, it's not about when. It's, mm -hmm. It'll be any time. So the fact that they're showing tourists that they are making steps to be prepared for this, I think, would encourage people to want to stay there. Right, and that would be no different than, say, you or I visiting the Midwest where we know there's going to be really bad thunderstorms and maybe there's a risk for tornadoes. We're, we're aware of that risk when we go there. Absolutely. If I see a sign for a tornado shelter, I'm going to remember that. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we're just doing a better job of being more prepared with something that's bound to happen again. I hope so. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Where can people uh, go again to learn more about the Tsunami Ready program here in Alaska? Well, one, there is a Tsunami Ready website. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just Tsunami Ready Google and that'll tsunami get ready. you there. Mm -hmm. okay. And then probably the best person for people to contact is their warning coordination meteorologist okay. at their local weather forecast office, which is Anchorage or Juneau most likely. Okay. All right. So most of the folks along the Bering Sea coast, again, are not at a huge risk for tsunamis. No, at this they don't need to worry about it. Okay, Thank very you. good. But always learning to be uh, prepared no matter where you are in Alaska, uh, no matter what the risk, always a good step. And tsunami is a major player in that, as we well know from events like 1964. Mm -hmm. okay. Alaskans are resilient. I really believe in them. Very good, very good. Well, Cindy, thank you so much for joining us again. And uh, please make an effort to uh, learn more about the Tsunami Ready program in your village and uh, town if you haven't already. Uh, we'll be back with Cindy again uh, next time to talk more about the Tsunami Warning Center in Palmer, Alaska. We actually have a group of geologists working for the National Weather Service. So scratch your head on that one, and we'll join you next time. I'll see you next time on Alaska Weather Packs. <music>this is one of the only times that we can find where we actually have ice in the bearing between those times of August. So a pretty neat note for the last uh, 40 years or so about getting sea ice in the Bering Sea. Up along the Arctic coastline, however, we are still seeing ice melting uh, from that Ukiagvik area through Kaktovik. Looking at our marine forecast for southeast Alaska, looking at very uh, calm seas overall with 5 to 10 knots out of a primarily southerly direction with uh, seas down 5 feet or less for most of the area as well. Then on Saturday, things picking up a fair amount in the inside waters looking at south to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots and then out over the Gulf waters south to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots as well. For Friday, for South Central Alaska, out over the Gulf waters, southeasterly winds 15 to 20 knots, becoming easterly in Prince William Sound at 15 knots, out over the Cook Inlet area, northeast winds 20 knots expected. For Saturday, we are looking at southeast winds out over the Gulf waters, 20 knots there, 15 knots out of the east for Prince William Sound, northerly winds over Cook Inlet around 10 knots, and then easterly winds 15 knots west of the Barren Islands. For the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island on Friday, around Kodiak Island and Chelikoff Strait, northeast winds 20 knots expected, and then southeast winds 15 knots on the eastern portions of the island. Out over the uh, Bering waters, we're going to see northerly winds 15 to 25 knots becoming stronger as we move farther to the west, and then 15 to 20 knots or 25 knots out of a north to northwest direction on the Pacific side as well, again stronger for the areas farther to the west. On Saturday, uh, weaker winds around Kodiak Island, uh, variable 10 knots on the eastern side in Chelikoff Strait, northerly winds 15 knots, 10 to 15 knots all around the Alaska Peninsula, strongest as we move farther to the west and northerly to northwesterly directions out there. For Friday, for the Aleutian Islands, a west to southwest wind direction, 15 to 20 knots most locations uh, near the central Aleutian Islands getting up to as high as 25 knots. Then on Saturday, northerly winds for the eastern Aleutians out of uh, 20 knots there, 15 knots for the central Aleutians, still primarily in northerly direction, and then becoming much more westerly by the western Aleutians around 20 knots. Down the west coast of the state, west to southwest winds for most of the northern locations, 15 knots in Norton Sound, 20 knots by St. Lawrence Island, 
uh, 10 to 20 knots around Nunavik Island and 15 knots by St. Matthew Island. Variable winds 10 knots expected for the Pribilof Islands. On Saturday, flow becoming much more northerly, 20 to 25 knots most locations, variable 10 by the Pribilof Islands, and west 15 up in Norton Sound. Along the Arctic coastline starting up north, we have uh, southwesterly winds 15 to 20 knots, getting up to as high as 25 knots as we get west of Wainwright. And then primarily southerly winds along the west coast around 20 knots, a little mix of the winds as we get by the Point Hope area, northerly winds there 25 knots. Then on Saturday, we're looking at northerly winds along the Arctic coastline around 10 knots, picking up as we move down the west coast, but staying out of that northerly direction, getting up to as high as 25 knots on either side of the Bering Strait, with seas up to as high as 8 feet there as well. Taking a look for our recap for tonight's weather, we have our system that's out by Kodiak Island that's stalling by the island, and it's continuing to bring on the easterly side southerly winds pulling up moisture from the North Pacific through the Gulf waters and bringing that rain to South Central Alaska. Heaviest portions of that rain are expected to be on the eastern side of the Kenai Peninsula and in Prince William Sound, but the rain will spread out farther to the east out by Yakutat, up through much of south central, albeit a lot lighter than the rain along the coastal ranges, and then down through southwest Alaska, Kodiak Island, and the Alaska Peninsula. Down by the Panhandle, some ridging is going to keep most of the precip at bay, again still some by Yakutat, but the interior however will be clearing out, fair conditions extending up through the Brooks Range as well and some of the north slope. However, as we get to the far northern uh, places along the Arctic coast, and we do expect some rain with a chance of mixing with snow by uh, Ukiagvik. Ridging will extend out through the Aleutian Islands and, Alaska, or, and Bering Sea, but out of the west we're going to see some rain for the Aleutian Islands extending into the central Bering as well. Moving into Friday, we're going to see more rain for the Aleutians and uh, Bering Sea with that westerly wind component. And then our low by uh, Kodiak will keep seeing rain for the Alaska Peninsula, southern portions of the mainland, and northern portions of the Panhandle. Our front moving through the northwestern portion of the state will bring some rain up along the Arctic coastline from Ukiagvik down through the northwest areas and the western portions of the Seward Peninsula. With Alaska Weather, I'm David Crank. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.